Thank you, Jenny. Our first speaker is uh, Jessica Zeski. She's the Director of Healthcare Investments at GE Ventures in Boston. At GE Ventures, she focuses on health, IT, IT-enabled health services, and non-invasive medical technology investments. She developed uh, investment hypotheses, source deals, ran diligence processes, and served on multiple boards. Please, a round of applause for Je Jessica Zeskis. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit today from a venture capital perspective, what it's like to um, some of the pitfalls and what we're really looking for when we're um, evaluating 3D printing technology, advanced manufacturing. GE Ventures um, invests across multiple industries, um, from industrial all the way through to healthcare, and can answer questions about that also after the presentation. So, let me just tell you, when I am listening to a startup company pitch to me, or we're looking at an M&A, the first thing I really want to hear you talk about to me is the problem. And I, I love it when there's just the elevator pitch, gotcha. And it, did you know that hearing aids are a $10 billion market, and we could get 10% of that market within three years? Huh. You know what? You have my attention now. So it's that quick... Um, problem set, and then you tell me the problem. And they don't fit well, there's abandonment issues um, in that problem. And then you tell me immediately what your solution is as a startup company. And we do X, Y, and Z. And then you've already got me with the market size, because that's what I'm really looking for as an investor. If I put money, if I put $5 million, $10 million into this company, do you have enough runway to go? And that could be a billion dollar market size, it could be a $500 million market size, but I really want to see how you've done your calculations, how you've looked at the addressable market size, and then how that goes into what your go-to-market strategy is going to be. And this is really important for manufacturing, the 3D printing side, as well as healthcare, because of the distribution channels. And I want to see, even early on, that you as a company have really thought through your, are you going to use channels? Are you going to do distributors? Are you going to use direct? What if there's channel conflict? I want to see that you and your team have really started thinking through these issues um, as an international distribution arms uh, for your go-to-market. And then the place where I spend a lot of time um, is on the competitive differentiation, though I think CEOs often think I spend a lot of time on this first, in the first pitch on this, and I don't. I assume that your technology works. I assume you've gotten a patent portfolio figured out. I assume you've got your royalties, et cetera, and that you are, I really want to hear how you're going to win. What I hear a lot of companies doing and CEOs is they spend an inordinate amount of time uh, in the first pitch on the product they're developing. And I'm not investing in just a product. I'm investing in a company and a team. And that team who's going to put the $5 million, the $10 million to work, isn't just going to go into that product. It's going to go into what's the next product after that? What's the next one after that? So I'm really looking for that competitive differentiation of the platform, not just an individual product. And the team is going to be a critical part of that. I want to see uh, on your slide, as a, um, again, as an investor, the backgrounds of your team and then your advisors. If um, you are doing a, if you're in the EU, I want to see who your EU advisors. I want to see your US advisors. I want to know how you're looking at the regulatory. Um, and that team can really bolster, even if they're not all paid, even if they're just advisors, that can really bolster um, a startup, even when they're early stage, to have that around them. And then finally, of course, I'm an investor. I'm going to look thoroughly at the financials. That typically comes um, at a later meeting where we dive through them. But at this stage, I really want to understand 
how you as a CEO are looking at your milestones. How much is it going to take to get to this milestone? If it's a clearance, if it is a um, first sale, if it is a minimal viable product, if it is your first uh, launch. Um, again, we're, we have so many different technologies we're looking at at GE, um, and so many great technologies here. You can understand that the milestones are tailored for every single one. So I want to hear from the CEO perspective that you've thought through how much money it's going to take you to get to those milestones and then moving forward. And then in my head, I'm, I'll probably double those numbers, but I, I really want to hear how you're thinking through them. So as we go through that pitch order, that's how I usually i am listening when I listen to um, four in these pitches. And I want to talk for just a minute about some pitfalls that I see when I'm hearing 3D printing healthcare companies pitch. Now, the first one, and in um, the compliance, regulation, and policies, which is actually the acronym of CRAP. It is the CRAP I'm really looking for. Do you really understand in every country that you are going to be launching a product in the compliance, regulation, and policies? And if you don't, I don't want to hear, oh, I've talked to a lawyer, we're fine. I want to see the memos. I want to really understand um, how we're going to mitigate any risks in those areas and how you are thinking about it and what experts you're going to bring in. These are very expensive mistakes to make uh, for an investor, for an early stage team. So bringing in experts from the very beginning is very extremely important in this, in this section. And again, it's, I'm fine with risk. We take risk, that's what we do as venture capitalists. What I don't want to take is known risk when we could actually have some of the answers and lay out a plan to mitigate those risks. So the pitfall number two, um, there, it's a stroke of pen market changes. Now what I'm looking for when I hear a CEO talk is, okay, obviously Trump is president. We had Obama as president. We don't know who the next president is going to be. How will your market size change based on, uh, I put the US presidents, but based on policies, based on changes in regulation. When I say stroke of pen, can your market size change completely? For hearing aids, again, I mentioned it before, $10 million market, are they suddenly over the counter instead of not over the counter in the US? That change, that's a stroke of pen market changes. I don't want to bet on a market that where it could change at the stroke of a pen. Um, and again, we cannot control for all the trade and tariffs and things like that, but what we do want to make sure is that the market size is based on um, something known, then the market size will stay consistent. So the next um, pitfall I really see, and this is my favorite, like the blueberry versus the chihuahua in the AI, and can you tell the difference? And it's really hard as a venture capitalist to tell the difference sometimes between what is a, um, a demo versus an install, a sale versus a pilot. And you'd think after all this time I'd have enough experience to figure this out, but I really have to do a lot of diligence to figure this out. Um, sales versus pilots in the, I'll say the hospital system, are they actually, I know, are we all still laughing at the chihuahuas? I know that they make me laugh. It, um, I gotta get some more of these up there. Uh, that, that, okay, so you built one and it's hand tooled, and you built another and it's hand tooled. Where are you in that process? And when, what I don't want to see a CEO say is, we're ready to launch, et cetera. And then I go back, and, you're, and they're putting them together by hand. I want to actually hear where you are in the installation process, how many of these you built, where you are in the um, sale versus pilot. And again, because we're crossing so many industries, it's hard to say what is a pilot but, um, versus a sale. But it's something I really spend time on. Because at GE Ventures, we're really looking at companies that are ready to scale and our customers want things that are ready to scale. And so just really understanding where you are in that process is very important. And the final pit, uh, pitfall that I'm going to go through is when I tell you, when someone comes and pitches me, I uh, immediately know the difference, whether they're pitching me an Apple, an iPhone, or an app. And sometimes they're pitching me Apple, but they really only have an app. And so I want to make sure that you're thinking about, are you, are you actually making something that makes the phone go faster? Are you making actually an app? Are you making an operating system? And that helps me understand where you are on the channel. 
Now, I want to invest in Apple, the company. I'm a, share, I'm a shareholder as a venture capitalist in a company, not just an improvement. And so what I'm really listening for in your pitches is that concept of where is shareholder value being created, not just so you can get a product to market, but what's the next product after that? Where I really like to see slides on this is on the product roadmap. That shows me um, that the company is really thinking through the grand scheme of how big this company could be. Now, again, I'm a venture capitalist. I come out from a very specific, not every company is, should be raising venture capital uh, or is ready to, but I wanted to share some of those lessons with you from companies I'm seeing in this space. So, um, and I really, so you can uh, take it as you will. Uh, I'm really looking forward to some of the pitch, pitches this afternoon and we'll be obviously listening for some of these points. Thank you very much.